In this video, we provide a brief introduction to phase diagrams of pure substances. The starting point for this video is the knowledge that we have acquired in the last few videos, in which we have seen how the molar Gibbs energy is a thermodynamic variable that controls the stability of phases in pure substances. The overall equation that tells you how the molar Gibbs energy of any phase uh, varies with the conditions of pressure and temperature is this one. And uh, what we've done is learn how this equation can be used to graph the dependence of the molar Gibbs energy on pressure and temperature for common substances in the gas, liquid, and solid phases. So what we have learned is that the molar Gibbs energy changes with pressure uh, according to this diagram for a gas, liquid, and solid, and then the molar Gibbs energy changes with temperature uh, for a gas, liquid, and solid like this, right? So the key here is to recognize that uh, at any point in these graphs, the phase that is stable is the one of lowest molar Gibbs energy, right? So a high temperature, for example, uh, this, is, this graph is at constant pressure, we have that the gas is the most stable phase, but if you were to cool down, right, then the solid eventually would become the most stable phase. With pressure at constant temperature, what we have is that when the pressure is very low, then uh, the gas is a stable phase, but as you increase the pressure, then the liquid becomes stable, and eventually if you'll uh, increase the pressure a lot, then the solid will be the stable phase. All right, so before we move forward, I just want to uh, reiterate the importance of the molar Gibbs energy. Right, so notice that that's the thermodynamic variable that controls everything here, the phase stability. And it's so important that, uh, as a matter of fact, we tend to redefine it, redefine it in chemistry and call it, instead of the molar Gibbs energy, we tend to call it the chemical potential. Right, so it's quite common to find books in which these two terms, molar Gibbs energy and chemical potential, are used interchangeably. And again, uh, they're exactly the same thing this will become even more important when we begin to study mixtures. Okay, so again, instead of molar Gibbs energy, we can rewrite this as simply chemical potential of a substance. All right, so uh, what is a phase diagram then? Well, a phase diagram is a culmination of all of this work, right? Notice that here we have studied separately the stability of phases with tem temperature, and here we have studied the stability of phases with pressure. So a phase diagram is simply a way to study the pressure and temperature dependence of phase stability at the same time, right? So as a matter of fact, a phase diagram is simply a map uh, of pressure versus temperature in which we uh, simply draw or display the most stable phase. Okay, so let's see how this, how this uh, is gonna look like. Look. We know that if you are at very high temperatures and low pressures, then gas is a stable phase, right? So when we go to high temperatures and low pressures, which is the arena of the diagram, that should be, uh, the, the most stable phase should be the gas. And again, in the phase diagram, we don't draw all of the phases, we're only going to draw the most stable ones. Okay, so again, we know that at high temperature, low pressure, the gas should be the stable phase. At the other end of the diagram, when we have low temperatures and high pressures, right? So when we're in this part of the region uh, of this map, low temperatures and high pressures, then the solid should be the stable phase. Okay, and then in the middle, you're going to have the liquid phase. All right. So this is how uh, phase diagrams generally look like. Uh, the only thing that we have to do to uh, culminate this diagram here is draw the separations between the phases, right? Notice that in this particular case, right, we had that the crossings between these lines, those were what we call, called uh, the equilibrium uh, transitions, right? So here you would have equilibrium vaporization, there you would have equilibrium fusion, okay, and that is when the molar gives energies or chemical potentials of the phases become the same. When you actually go to this uh, P versus T diagram, those points, uh, where you had equilibrium and now are now going to be lines, right? And those lines uh, tend to look something like this, right? So some, that's a pretty common phase diagram for most substances. Not all the substances have this phase diagram, but this is really, really common. Okay, so these are called boundaries 
are, are simply uh, uh, places where you have an equilibrium between the faces, right? So at any point in this phase boundary, you are going to have an equilibrium between liquid and gas, that is vaporization or condensation, depending on how you decide to cross the line. Here you will have either sublimation or deposition, and there you will have melting uh, or fusion uh, or, or freezing, depending on, on how you cross the line. And again, you have that equilibrium throughout these lines. Okay, so in, in the next few videos, we're going to uh, explain uh, much more what these phase boundaries mean and how they are determined. Okay, now, uh, how do you read these diagrams? Well, so uh, it's important to recognize that, again, the only thing that you're doing here is plotting what is the stable phase, right? So in all of these regions, you have that the gas is a stable phase. That region, the liquid, is the stable phase. And in that region, the solid is the stable phase. Okay, so let's see if we can reconcile these phase diagrams with our knowledge of how substances behave. Right, so suppose that you start uh, here with a gas, and then what we're going to do is simply change the conditions that that gas is under uh, and see what happens to the stable phase, right? So what we're going to do is cool down at constant pressure. Right, so if I take this point right here in which the gas is a stable phase and I cool down, right, so the temperature uh, decreases, eventually I'm going to hit that phase boundary. And what I have then is that uh, the little gas starts to condense into the liquid. Right, at this point I would have an equilibrium condensation. But if I decided to continue to uh, cool down at constant pressure, what would then happen is that uh, instead of the condensation, I will now have that the liquid is the stable phase. Right? So I come to this point, uh, the liquid is stable phase in all of that region until I get to that phase boundary. And in that phase boundary, I, ha I have an equilibrium free stem, right? So there's an equilibrium between the solid and the liquid. And if, this I, if I decide to cool down at constant pressure, eventually I will get to the solid. Okay, so uh, notice that at these particular points, what we have is that that should be uh, the boiling point or the equilibrium operation point, and that point is what we call the freezing point. Okay, and that happens for this particular pressure that I've decided to work at. Okay, so that's how you read a phase diagram, and again, that agrees with uh, our knowledge of how substances behave when you change the temperature. Now, before we move on to explain uh, uh, the phase boundaries and the critical and the uh, characteristic points of these phase diagrams, uh, notice that this is just a generalization of how a phase diagram looks like. Uh, uh, phase diagrams can get very complicated even for pure substances, especially up here in this part where you have that most substances might have more than one solid phase, right? And that's something that we're not going to consider in this particular se series of videos. Okay, so uh, uh, that's something that uh, you have to be mindful of. Uh, something that will be important as well is that in some substances, like for example water, the slope of this line will be slightly different. Notice how the slopes of all of these lines are positive, but it turns out that for water and, and a set of other substances that behave like water, uh, the slope of this line will be slightly negative, and we'll delve a little deeper into the significance of that uh, negative slope. Right, so let me summarize here. In this video, we have seen how um, our work with the molar Gibbs energy and its variation with pressure and temperature can be aggregated into something that we call a phase diagram, which is simply a map that displays the stable phases of pure, pure substances at the different conditions of pressure and temperature.